welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, KK Kaneshiro. The Fremont Unified School District is dedicated to providing the best educational opportunity for students with special needs. Approximately 12% of the district's enrollment is identified as special needs students, requiring additional programs and services. Each student who qualifies for special education has individualized education plan designed to meet the needs of that individual student. These services are coordinated through the district special education department and here with us today to talk about everything that we have to offer for our students of all grade levels is assistant director Christopher Crone and program specialist Jonelle Brown and Paula Cassano and of course our favorite co-host Dr. Jim Morris. Thank you so much for being here. Now I know for a lot of the community members they have no idea that we offer these services. How long have we been doing this? Forever? Since the um, was 1974. 1974. Wow. Because I think this is a big secret that a lot of people don't understand that we do take care of every student in our district. And I think this is great. But can you give us an overview of your department and what services you offer? So, when it comes to special education, it is a very broad range. Mm -hmm. um, we work together with um, general education staff we to meet the needs of every student in the district okay. um, so special education starts from birth and goes up to, to the age of 22 for those who are eligible and qualify under the law of requiring special education services um, and currently as you had stated about 12 percent about 3800 students with IEPs in the district wow. Okay. We have, um, we work with every school in the district to make sure that student needs are being met. Okay. So um, one of the things in speaking SPED, we love to speak in acronyms, SPED meaning special education, and the most popular acronym is the IEP, which is the Individualized Education Plan. Every student that requires special education services needs one mm -hmm. and is obligated to one. And the other, two, the other two acronyms that I will share with you is um, FAPE and the LRE, which is Free and Appropriate Public Education in the Least Restrictive Environment. And okay. that starts in the general education classroom. Okay. And so we have about um, several hundred special day classes, diff different types of special day classes. When it comes to the range of um, least restrictive environment starting in that general education program, there are different types of special education classes that are designed to meet the unique needs of our students. Okay, so when a parent comes to enroll their child in our school district, um, and say it's an emotional problem and they don't realize that is a special needs, you as administrators, how do you help I identify the student who needs help but the parent doesn't realize it? How does that work? Well, I think often your your question's a great one. You know, students access special education mm -hmm. services through a variety of ways. Sometimes the parent will come and say, you know, I think my child has a speech problem. I'm not sure if they're articulating correctly. Or a parent may say, my child is struggling with learning. Right. We need help. Or, you know, a student may have a need for some adapted physical education. Oftentimes, it's a parent will come and they'll either talk with us when they enroll their child or they'll talk with the teacher or the principal at the school. Sometimes, after a student has been in school for a while, a teacher will say, hmm, maybe we need to take a okay. look at. So there's a variety of ways that students come to special education. Um, and often, it, it's all not necessarily at the time of enrollment. Sometimes it's, I think, more often than not, after students have been in school for a while, um, a teacher or a parent we'll or someone at the school will say, hey, let's talk about. And that's really how it begins, um, really understanding and learning who the child is. Right, because I'm sure a lot of parents need to be educated. Yes. Yeah. I think part of the process too is um, when we do find out that the student may have um, significant needs, 
uh, we go through a process such as uh, through the general education, uh, which is called the student study team, where we kind of look at the student as a whole, how are they um, accessing the curriculum, where are their uh, strengths, where are their weaknesses, and what interventions can we use mm -hmm. to help the student be successful. And if we feel at that point that we've tried these, you know, multiple interventions and we're still not seeing the success that we had wanted, then we could have a, that referral for the special education process, and then from there have a special education um, assessment through the you know all areas of suspected disability, and from there, if the child is found eligible, then we kind of look um, yeah, through the assessment where are their areas of needs. Mm -hmm. So we create goals for them, and then based off of their goals, provide us the services uh, that are appropriate to meet the student's needs. And then once you've identified the student as a special need for whatever reason, are they taken off that campus to a different campus or is there a classroom on the campus that they've known and come to know and love now or how does that work? So great question. We like to say that special education is not a place. It's a service or a set of services. And Chris taught us the acronym just now, the LRE, so the Least Restrictive Environment. So. We're obligated to educate kids um, as close to that general education setting as possible. Okay, good. Um, and then we, of course, it's individualized to each child's needs. So some children do perhaps need a specialized <coughs> classroom, but not all kids with, with special needs need to be segregated like that. And in fact, our research that it shows they often do better right. the more included they are. That's good. Okay, so for any parent out there, they can realize or understand that they don't have to drive to a different location to take care of that child, which is, I think, more pressure on the parent. Well, some, w when, when it comes to special education, and again, every school in the district has some form of special education services at every school. Good. Um, okay. But that starts as far as what we call our resource specialist mm -hmm. programs in our designated instruction. So we have about 80 resource specialists throughout the district at every single school site. We have a number of uh, support providers such as speech language pathologists and school psychologists that are also working throughout every school site. Sometimes a student may require a more restrictive environment such as a special day class. Mm -hmm. We have different types of special day classes. So on the on the less restrictive side we have a mild moderate special day classes and then we have and those students are still working towards grade level curriculum mm -hmm. they're still working towards a general education diploma we have other types of special day classes that might be more restrictive to be able to meet the, the students unique needs that okay. may focus on life skills or independent living skills moderate special day classes moderate severe special day classes we also have intensive instruction um, special day classes that might serve more students on the more severe side of the autism spectrum. We also have counseling enriched classes. Not every school has every type of special day class. So we do have um, specific special day classes that are um, spread out throughout the district. Okay. We try to make the um, uh, transportation needs as minimal as possible as far as attendance areas and we try to keep students as close to their home school if not in their home okay, school good. as close as possible. Yeah. I think the important thing especially from a parent perspective that parents need to understand is you know oftentimes it's difficult for parents um, to know what is typical growth or development mm -hmm. and so that's why that communication between parents and the school is so Vital. critically yeah. important to, to really understand um, that the people at the school, and, and I think you heard it, really begin with this assumption. Let's sit down and look at a child and, and begin recognizing the unique talents and the beauty and the every child is, is different and unique. And I think by beginning to look at what a child's strengths are, what are the things that they do really well, that's how the process works because it it's, sometimes takes building trust with parents, mm -hmm. um, helping them understand that yes. our intention is to do everything we can to help. Um, and, and that's what I think the, the representatives of, from our special education office mm -hmm. today do better than anybody, is just build those bonds with families to yeah. say, we gotta do this together and, and we, we can do it together. Yeah. 
I think that's wonderful. Um, because of all the students you deal with and all the parents that you deal with, you know, um, special needs can range from physical to emotional to mental to anything. Uh, can you dispel some of the misconceptions that are out there to help our viewing audience understand that they're part of our community, they're one of us? So um, I'll start by saying, and, and then just to piggyback off of what Dr. Mm -hmm. Morris was saying is that, you know, I like to say that we are in the business of saving the world one IEP at a time. <laughs> and the IEP. You are. <laughs> the, IEP thing, the IEP is a team effort, and so when it comes back to it, it is, uh, we are customer service providers, and we have to know who our customers are. First and foremost, we're in the business like of doing that. what's best for students, and, and parents are VIPs of an IEP meeting. Um, th at the IEP table is where all decisions are made. It's a collaborative effort. Parents are a very important part of that team, and to be able to um, work together to look at their their child that's mm -hmm. why we are there so it's looking at you know first and foremost what are the child's strengths and and areas of interest and that's built off of those strengths what are the concerns of the parents that they have and let's work together to be able to address those concerns look at what the areas of need are and then go from there Right. So all of those goals, we, 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 we work together to develop appropriate goals, and then we look at services that are necessary to be able to reach those goals. Some of the misconceptions um, I think that we have talked about as well is that, you know, a student that's in special education has to be in a different type of environment or a different right. type of classroom. And where, in truth, most of our students are served in a general education setting. Um, and some of that might require a special, a, an education specialist going into a general education classroom, working with them in that environment. There may be times where a student is pulled out to work on a specific skill, mm -hmm. but to the extent appropriate to be able to participate and grow and develop just like um, they're typically developing peers. So that would be one misconception is that they have to be separated from there. Yeah, I like that. Any other misconceptions out there? I think one of the <coughs> common misperceptions that I see is, you know, we, we, we may have a, a parent of a first grader or a second grader who are very, very concerned because their child is struggling with calculus. Yeah. And, <laughs> and really helping the parents to understand that's okay. They'll get it, you yeah, know. They're only it's, six. They're, they're only yeah. six. And mm -hmm. calculus <laughs> will come, but it's a little, it's a little early really educating and working with our community to say, to, to, to really sometimes manage the expectations that parents have of um, what their, their children should be doing. Um, at that level. At that level. Yeah, that's great. Can you tell me some of your success stories? Like students you've been working <laughs> on and working with for all these years and now they've developed into this great human being who does whatever? Yeah, well, I actually was um, a special education high school teacher prior to becoming a program specialist, so I was teaching for about eight or nine years mm -hmm. um, at American High School, so I've had um, a slew of students who have c come through, um, and I've worked with them, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, and a good chunk of them I'm still in contact with. So I've oh. had students who are, um, who've left me, have gone straight into the work workforce. Nice. Um, I actually have a couple of students, one who went into cosmetology and is now working um, at the salon at, in Ulta. They went to the state mm. board test? Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then I actually have another one who's in nursing school right now. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, you know, that part of the misconception that students may, you know, who are in special ed um, don't amount to anything or don't have any growth beyond high school yeah. or, um, is... You know, just it's just not there because most of the students um, have access to the general education curriculum and are going, you know, post secondary whether it's through school mm -hmm. or going straight into the mm -hmm. workforce, um, but have some sort of plan for them, you know, as they leave if they want to go, um, go to work or if they're wanting to continue their education. I have students who are at San Jose State playing um, football as well. Nice. So it's it's nice to see and it's nice to continue having contact with my students to know that. You know, everything that we had done throughout high school has definitely impacted them, and they're still taking that with them, mm -hmm. you know, years beyond high school. That's great. So. Uh, just 
because I'm looking outside in, um, since our special needs students are still incorporated in the general classroom, how do you stop people or the, their peers from teasing them? How does the, does a teacher get involved and educate them to understand so everyone understands what this student is going through? How does this happen? So I'll, I'll chime in on there for a second. Is that um, you know we, we we work really hard when it comes to um, incorporating our students as to have a, that sense of belonging. Yeah. And we we have um, uh, we put a lot of effort into what we call. Um, um, disability or disability awareness to be able to educate everyone that students learn may learn differently. Right. We also focused on um, putting students before their disability. That's we're, right. we're in the you know we're, we're talking about students um, first and they and they, they they may have a disability but that disability doesn't define them right. which kind of goes off to another one of the misconceptions is that when a student is labeled, as a special education student, that that label is what defines them. Right. And so what we look at is what are the services that are required or that are necessary, mm -hmm. again, but it's a, it is a um, um, inclusive approach. One thing that I think that we're very proud of is our Special Olympics program, which um, uh, is just one of our, my favorite days of the year where students are general education students are cheering on students everybody is involved together the community is involved it's a very um, um, collaborative day and there's just a sense of belonging that's that, that's there and I think the success stories validate everything you're already doing to make everyone feel they're a part of this team very inclusive I love yeah. this and, and I think adding on to what Mr. Crone said it, it's a community responsibility mm -hmm. um, when you really look at the diversity of Fremont. I think it's something that as a community we, we share as a value right. to, to really teach young people that we need to um, have an appreciation and really of, of other cultures and other people. And I think when our community, Fremont as a whole, really places a high value on that. It does carry over mm -hmm. to the school and it helps us to really raise up young people who uh, understand that we are all different. But we're all in this together. Yes. Well, <laughs> go ahead. If I could speak to um, other success stories and you know w we often talk about students that are able to graduate with a diploma and to be able to go on and get jobs we are all about getting them ready for the Life. workforce and, and 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 jobs at the same time there are students with more significant disabilities mm -hmm. that may not be able to graduate with a regular diploma right. or a general diploma and those students are um, eligible to stay in programming up until the age of 22, but we also, we celebrate small victories where some students may have learned to be able to navigate through public transportation or to, to be able to work on those soft skills on how to advocate for themselves or to be able to participate, uh, you know, serving in the community. Um, one story I heard today was a student that wasn't quite ready, job ready, mm -hmm. but they had so much anxiety that they, that they were afraid to even step out of their comfort zone, but we worked with them to be able to step out of that, and they participated by volunteering at Tri-Cities and nice. was very successful and came out, and, you know, talking up a storm about what they did <laughs> and how they were doing it. So those, those mm -hmm. small victories to be able to um, um, Celebrate. see a, 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 a child's growth in that area is um, exactly worth, yeah, worth celebrating. Celebrate. I applaud your efforts. I think you do important work and I thank you from behalf of the community. Thank you for being here as well. And from everyone here at Community Conversation, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.